Jack, just with today's practice, just what was a uh, main point of emphasis for you uh, for where you guys are right now, just in the time of the season? You know, it's interesting. I, I think we've kind of taken the approach of trying to use every single day to get better. And so whether that is a 20 minute segment or a seven minute segment uh, of using the opportunity to get on the floor and either walk through some things for muscle memory wise or uh, try to clean up some things defensively to make sure that we continue to be on the same page and be aligned that way. And, uh, and then you prepare offensively for what you might see versus Philly. We just spoke to Dory and he just told us that he is going to be out uh, for tomorrow for today's practice. Was Ben able to participate and do you have an update on him? Yeah, Ben was a um, partial participant because uh, we tried to go up and down a little bit and so we held him out of that uh, portion of practice. So he was able to go through some sets and uh, walk through some things defensively. Uh, so he was a partial participant. Do you have an update when it comes to availability? Day to day, uh, and I guess that's one day away. And so uh, we'll see uh, how his response was uh, later this evening. He'll get treatment and then uh, treatment also in the morning. So um, I hope to see him playing. That's the uh, inclination for this group, and the uh, hopeful expectation is he's playing. What did you think about the defense in his minutes at the, you know, kind of quote unquote five? Yeah, I guess you can call it the five. You know, all those minutes he was on the floor where the Royce was out there with him, and Royce usually guarded the five. That's just kind of how we try to, um, you know, combine and, and use it as a strength of ours. Uh, it's going to be interesting. He gives us the versatility. You saw the other night, just in a situation with Nurkic, where without Doe, Ben, or Dennis, another big body to. Uh, clean up some of the scrap from, from switching, it's hard to do. And uh, Ben allows us to do that. So he can guard Maxi, but he also can guard Par Reed and be able to protect the rim for us. So that's the importance. Speaking of Maxi, obviously his 51 point game yesterday makes presents another challenge for you guys. Um, how, how challenging, with so many guards you can score, how challenging is it with Maxi the way he's playing? Um, this season, especially after how he played yesterday? Yeah, there's, uh, I think what makes it extremely challenging, Evan, is the freedom in which he's allowed to play with. That freedom of getting a rebound and, and just going the length of the floor and uh, playing faster without Joel. And so it's just more opportunities he's going to have with the basketball in his hands. And that's a lethal combination uh, because you have to react to him. And if he's making threes, that takes the, you know, the responsibility to a, a, another level. So uh, the ball will be in his hands, which makes it pretty tough. And with Nick obviously playing so many minutes, you talked about trying to space his minutes or careful with his minutes. If, if Ben can't go tomorrow and you guys are as a size, size disadvantage again. How do you learn from Wednesday's game to try to prepare for this Philly team, even if they don't have Embiid, but just how do you guys overcome that disadvantage this time? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, to Lucas' question the other day, we've been pretty scientific in uh, trying to get Nick to a position that once the playoff comes around, he's been exposed to playing high minutes. Now we can't, you know, live in that world, but in order to, to run a marathon, you got to get to, you know, like 18 or 19 miles kind of thing. You, get, you just can't keep running three and six and think you're going to run a marathon. So it's kind of that realm a little bit. So we'll pick our opportunities when we're going to ramp up his minutes. Uh, a lot of that is some of the feedback we get from him and how he's feeling. The other night, I think he played 30. Uh, and so there are going to be some nights we need to push him to 38. And there are going to be some nights that hopefully we can get away with playing him 26. Uh, we'll still use Royce. Uh, and hopefully Ben can cover up some of those minutes if, uh, uh, if he plays. With Nick playing those extra minutes, I guess, what are you seeing from him just adjusting to that? Because obviously he's, you're ramping him up, but how is he adjusting with when you do play him a little bit longer in some of these games? It's a, um, a skill set I think you have to learn in order to still put your foot on the gas pedal and not coast and not think that uh, you have to take possessions off because the process is to be able to play those possessions as if you were going to play a four or five minute stint. Uh, so that's the, the rationale behind it. I think he's learning how to get his second win, when to uh, get a little extra rest in the timeouts and the free throw line, but uh, still have an impact in covering up the rim for us. So it's, it's definitely a skill that you got to learn when you play more minutes. Obviously, Ben added so much to the transition offense in his game. What did you see kind of in the half court setting? Did it feel as smooth as you wanted it to be? Or I think the, the biggest thing that helped that Lucas was the uh, the linemen behind it. Uh, he was really out there with four shooters all of his minutes. Right. 
And so uh, that helped us have spacing and have a, a pretty good flow that uh, even when we got chunky at some times, we were able to get in and out of those situations because there were four smalls around them. And whether they were able to play secondary action with some pace, I think that covered up some of the lack of practice time that we've had. Right. We got this chance to see Jarek for a, a few minutes yeah. out here. How is he doing? We saw the the cast and yeah, just how yeah, what are his spirits like? And the crutches and uh, so this is, you know, this is a part of uh, you know everyone has their own NBA story and um, it's not always you know linear uh, what your career is going to look like and so this is an opportunity where he's got a challenge in front of him and uh, he should look forward to conquering this challenge. So I look forward to to seeing him you know, get through this and, and being a part of his development and, and growing in the summer. So, uh, but this is a, a stage of his career. He'll remember it, he'll be better from it, and he'll recover from it. What's the feeling about, in general, the, there's been a lot of discussion with Joel's injury, the 65 game minimum for awards and uh, all NBA teams? Yeah, you know, I, I really do have an opinion about a lot of stuff that I just don't share, because I'm not on that committee. They want to put me on the committee, but that was collectively bargained. So it doesn't matter what I say, Lucas. It doesn't. Well, doesn't, doesn't matter. I wouldn't say it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't <laughs> matter. Doesn't matter at all. Put me on the committee, then I'll give you some feedback. Not, not up to me. All right. <laughs>